like everything in medicine, the diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis is based on pattern recognition. If a patient comes with back pain, the first thing, of course, you're going to think is this could be mechanical back pain because that's the commonest type of back pain there is. If you take 100 patients with mechanical back pain or back pain in general, 94% of them would probably have mechanical back pain. 1% would have a pathological back pain. This is the serious one that we shouldn't miss. This could be fracture, cancer, malignancy, infection, osteomyelitis, etc. And 4% to 5% of the patients would have inflammatory back pain or axial spondyloarthritis. And so the pattern recognition starts by asking the patient with back pain, tell me about your back pain. Is the back pain better with exercise or is the back pain worse with exercise? Is the back pain better with rest or worse with rest? And inflammatory back pain, which is better with activity or exercise and worse with rest, uh, getting up in the second half of the night or back pain that wakes you from sleep, significant early morning stiffness, starting before the age of 45, insidious onset, no cause for that, there is no trauma. All of these things should make you wonder, hmm, this is something different. And when that happens, then the next thing you of course do is in the history is, well, do you have any peripheral arthritis? Is there any joint swollen? Have you noticed one of your toes swollen like a sausage? We call that dactylitis or typical features of enthesitis like plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, etc. Do you have psoriasis? Do you have uveitis? Do you have inflammatory back pain? These are all spondyloarthritis features and any of these things being, any of these issues being there in the patient would increase the probability this person probably has axial spondyloarthritis. So that's the pattern recognition. Once you do that, then of course you do the examination. Examination of the patient is important because you rule out other reasons for their backache and also find out whether the patient really has peripheral arthritis. Does the patient have psoriasis? Does the patient have any evidence of enthesitis, dactylitis, uveitis, etc.? Those you think, those are the things that you find on the examination. And then come the investigations. The typical investigations I would send would be to look for evidence of inflammation. So on the blood test, I would send sedimentation rate or C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein being high would just tell me there is inflammation somewhere. It doesn't tell me where the inflammation is, but in the patient where I'm suspecting axial spondyloarthritis, that is yet another uh, piece of the puzzle. Imaging comes after that, and plain X-ray of the sacroiliac joint will show me whether there is sacroiliitis or not. If that is not there, and my suspicion is still high, I would first send a blood test called HLA-B27. HLA-B27 is a genetic marker for axial spondyloarthritis. Seven and a half percent of white Caucasian people in the United States have that marker. So having the marker increases your risk of getting axial spondyloarthritis, but that alone never makes the diagnosis. So that is yet another piece in the puzzle in somebody who has inflammatory back pain and other features of axial spondyloarthritis. After HLA-B27, the last investigation we have is the MRI scan of the sacroiliac joint. I always tell my colleagues that we should not be ordering MRI scan as the first thing. It is A, expensive, and B, that can be also be falsely positive. One has to know what one is looking at. Uh, so the MRI scan can be useful, uh, but it can also be false positive in inexperienced hands. And so that is the journey a doctor would take to diagnose somebody with axial spondyloarthritis. But it all starts with pattern recognition and suspecting the diagnosis in somebody with mechanical, with a chronic back pain starting before the age of 45, uh, insidious onset, and then thinking that this may not be mechanical, this may be inflammatory.